Of course, Mike Tyson is known for his life both in and out of the boxing ring. Well, now he's uh, taking his life to a new stage with a stage show called Undisputed Truth, but no one gets the truth like that man, Brian Kilmeade. I sat down with him uh, late last week to look back at his career, where it was and where it's going. I came out of college and started covering sports just when you started bursting on the scene. Thanks for waiting for me. I appreciate it. I owe you a favor. <laughs> Thank my mama. <laughs> so first off, yeah. I think back to your life. Was there any part of you growing up in Brooklyn in that brutal surrounding that you were, and you say a heavy set kid, very few friends, that thought, I'm going to be famous one day, somehow, no, some way? No, never, um, never came to my mind. I never thought about being famous. I don't even know what I thought about doing. You know, I was always picked on. I never went to school because the guys were bullying me all the time. But I just never knew I was going to be famous. Never for fighting. Definitely not that. So, Mike, arrested be 30 times before you're 13. You end up going to, uh, uh, like, a juvenile home and running across uh, a guy named Bobby Stewart. What made you, when you heard he was a boxer, what made you say, I want to try that? He hit me in the stomach. I never in my life been hit in the stomach. And I went down, and I said, wow. I said, can you teach me how to do that, sir? Because I'm thinking, I'm going to go back to my old neighborhood, take that stuff, and, 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 and go in their pockets and take yeah. that stuff. Uh, so I said, oh, can you teach me that, please, sir? And he's like, no, you ain't going to learn nothing, you know? And he just, just tore me out. And then eventually, I started behaving like a nice kid. He taught me how to box and introduced me to cuss. He's like, I've been bringing it down. He's like, I've been bringing down, bang, over here. Bang, with gloves took care over here. You hop in the ring, and you're 24-3 and three as an amateur, and you have a lot of success, but you don't get on the Olympic team. It was a blessing that I had to stay another year in the amateurs, and I blossomed. You did, and Got you end up going pro, and I kept hearing about this guy from New York and how good he is. Some of the knockouts start happening. Bang the body. Wow. You become the youngest heavyweight champion, and you're on a roll. What was your life like then? This took more than what I can anticipate ever and um, plan. It was just, it's what I wanted, but it was just so overwhelming. Here's an example after uh, one fight, Mike Tyson, uh, after the ring, just like waiting to be champion again. What is this? There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. I'm My decision is impregnable. Like I am. And I'm ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. So you beat uh, Lou Savarese. Yeah. You're ripped then. You were just, you, you were just yeah, yelling at the shame. screen. I was in shape, Brian. <laughs> what, you, you were ready to go? You're not in bad shape now. Not like that. <laughs> not like that. But you're ready to go. But after that was done, people would be all crazy about the post fight more than even the fight itself. Well, you know, um. Was that a show or were you really angry? No, that's just a show right there. But that's, that's, that's what you do. Um, boxing is like, um, men's soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. Well, I bought into it. Also, I, I was two blocks away at your press conference. I'm saying to myself, what would it be like to Lennox Lewis and uh, Tyson get together? When are they ever going to get together? So here's the press conference. And they said, Mike Tyson, after the press conference, he'll probably give you an interview, Brian. Little did I know how this would turn out. Let's take a look at the press conference where you in a black outfit. Oh, no. <laughs> that was my camera. Look at this guy. I'm talking to this guy. He pushed me. Boom, I missed him. Oh, God, that was a good shot. Well, he tried to get me. Oh, God. And it was just I chaos. Just, what do you remember from that? I just, um, I should have been tased that day. <laughs> I should have been tased that day. <laughs> I, I was sitting there underneath I you, and I was really weird. I think, oh, God, I should be tased that day. I, should, I thought I should have been tased during the, um, the second Holyfield fight. Remember, I'm chasing the police and everything, I'm running around. Oh, I thought, oh, God, I should have been You are in the acting business. Can we see some of the best of Mike Tyson actually in the movies? Mike Tyson? Oh, shh. This is my favorite part coming up right now. First off, good drumming. <laughs> did, you really, did you really hit him? No, but um, oh. he's just such a good actor, this guy, man. I was just happy to be involved with that stuff. You like this movie thing, right? Oh, I love this stuff. You know, I love it. And um, I did um, a Scary Movie 5 that's out now. And this is just what I want to do now. You know what I mean? I did the boxing guy back then, tough guy. I'm, oh, you touch me, I'll kill your mother. Sorry about the spit. But I'll kill you. But no, nah, that, that's over. Now it's this guy. <laughs> uh, I like this guy. Sorry about the spit. Yeah. 
Uh, he talks about his one-man play a little bit later, and he also weighs in on what president is better for his pocketbook. You like him, later. don't you? Ah, I do. I mean, he, I, I think he's exciting, and I love the sport. He made the sport matter. Sure. And the sport doesn't really matter like when he was, when he was in it. Mm -hmm. But I think um, he's going to be uh, in Wilkes-Barre on the 1st, in Philadelphia on the 2nd, in Boston on the 4th, and Old Westbury here in, uh, on Long Island on the 5th. Uh, earlier we showed you uh, some of my interview with Mike Tyson. We talked about his career and his new role as an actor. He also revealed a side of himself we don't often see, similar to his new stage show, Undisputed Truth. Take a look. Well, after I left prison, I have to admit I was scared. You ain't gonna believe this. I had around 380 to 400 million dollars in my bank account, right? Me. And not a clue how I was gonna survive the next 400 seconds. When did you realize I could take my life because people keep asking about it and I could bring it to the stage? I never knew that, but I knew um, something was going to change with the life I was living. Because even when I was using drugs and getting high, I was like, God, I wish I could stop doing this. If I could stop doing this, I promise I'd never do this again. If I could stop. But I was still sniffing, though, but I was saying it. Yeah. But I just planted that seed. So it's, because it's really not funny, but I planted the seed, and eventually it stopped. You know, my daughter passed away, and... I just wanted to make a change in life. I wanted to be more committed than being a service to society. I just wanted, in order for that to happen, I had to, I had to kill and get, away, get rid of all of my past. And so you have seven kids. Yeah. So what is it like having little kids around there? Um, it makes you feel old. You know what I mean? Because you're 47, you got these little babies. When they're, when they're 15, you're going to be in the senior citizen ward. And I wonder sometimes how this is going to be. But this is something that... Um, it's really ironic about my kids that I'm um, this stage of my life, which would seem to anybody else physically, materialistically, the worst stage of my life, is um, it's been the most balancing stage of my life I've ever experienced in my life. I never in a hundred years was able to have a relationship with my children. I had all this money, I couldn't have a relationship to me. They hate my guts. Now I'm at a stage where at least I'm their friend. They call me dad. Right. You know, and um, that to me, um, if I was to die tomorrow, I feel like I was over, overcharged, I was overpaid in life. Because you had nobody to call dad. Your mom, you were basically on your own almost your entire life. Well, I never had good, um, I didn't have good parents, so I didn't have, I, I couldn't be a good parent. I'm not saying I'm a good parent now. But you're trying. But I'm saying um, I'm willing to try to be a good parent. So this is this is the new Mike, and you're going to be back on stage shortly. I don't know if this guy is new, but this is what he has to do today. He right. had to be that other guy then, but today he has to be this guy. Do you worry about the other guy coming back? No, that guy's dead. You know, he's pretty dead because he couldn't survive in this world. If he did come back, how, what can he do? Who is he going to threaten? Who is he going to bite? Mm. What's he going to do? Right. You know what I mean? So he has to do this. He has to be adaptable. But do you realize what you're doing now? You are blue collaring it, so you owe the IRS money. Oh. So instead of sitting back, uh -huh. you're going, I'm going to work this thing. I'm going to oh. get a one man show going. I'm going to go do movies. I'm going to do books. I'm going to yeah. make this thing happen. I don't know, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm so proud to be in this. I know people laugh and say I'm a smug. I look forward to paying off my tax and paying off my country because that's my duty. I know they say that's, that's legal extortion, but listen, I'm living in this country, and if I got to pay taxes, that's the money I pay for, for my life on earth. My wife, my family, I'm in the biggest liberal family in the world, but I have the more money when Bush and Reagan was president. I was living Oh, I should have said my wife's going to kill me for that yeah. one. But yeah, this is a yeah. good year financially they, for that Bush stuff. Bush and Reagan had this idea that you should keep your money. Yeah, I like that to work for me. I <laughs> like that one. I'm going to work on that one, too, with this Obama administration. Just seeking this Obamacare help us keep some money. All right, Mike, I got to ask you, just uh, if you saw in Boston and you saw what happened, the uh, bombings in Boston, you see these guys who became, uh, it ever looks to be, militant Islamists. Yeah. So... You are somebody, I don't know, are you a Muslim right now? Yeah, big time. So are you, do you understand that mentality for your religion? What should people know about I don't know. when those guys do those you things? Know, I can't represent my religion, you know, because I have to represent my own salvation with Allah. So it's hard for me to represent my religion, you know? Do you think Allah wants them to do that? I don't think anybody wants them to do that. I doubt in a hundred years God wants anybody. That's God's creation. Why would anybody want to do that? There's just certain people that are jealous with the way we live our lifestyle. And they can't dictate our, the women in our life, that they're dressing the way they want. They can't beat them up and score their face. This is what this all comes from. I'm not saying Islam is this way, but this is it's these guys that are jealous of the way we live our life here, our culture. No path was paved for you. You took an opportunity. You did the best you can. You went from nowhere to everywhere. That is something uniquely American, don't you think? I think that should be human, you know? This is the best country in the world for people to have progress and enterprise. If you want that, this is the place to be. You know, these other countries that are jealous of us, 
That's just the way it is. People are jealous of people. That's been that way before you were born and I was born. It's going to continue to be that way. Straight talk from Mike Tyson. Wow, okay. that was fascinating. But he, uh, he's got his one-man show, and it's going to be, he could be coming to a theater near you, and he owes, he doesn't think he'll ever be able to pay back the government. I don't think he paid taxes or his people paid taxes in 20 years boxing, and he made over $400 million. Oh, my goodness. So look at where he's going to be. He's going to be at Westbury. He's going to be in Boston, Philadelphia. And you can go Undisputed Truth, uh, TysonTour.com. Tyson on Tour. Tyson on Tour.com to find out more information. Mm -hmm. Very nice of him to come by. Very nice interview.